this song loud and clear, beloved? Especially if you are believing the Lord for His touch upon your life here today. Power must change hands. No matter what that man makes that's louder than anyone around you while rejoicing before the Lord I'd like you to sing these songs loud and clear lifted I am lifted I am lifted by thy Lord out of sin and sorrows into the presence of sing it loud and clear lifted I am lifted oh, yes, sir. I am lifted By fire, let it be my God. I'm sorry, by fire, let it be my God. I'm sorry, by fire, let it be my God. I'm sorry, by fire, let it be my God. I'm sorry, by fire, let it be my God. I'm sorry, by fire, let it be my God. I'm sorry, by fire, let it be my God. Oh, shake it, we must be shaking. Oh, move, we will keep on moving. Serve in the God of fire, our shake we must be shaking. Hallelujah, our shake we must be shaking. Hallelujah, our move we will keep on moving. Hallelujah, I'm serving the God of fire, our shake we must be shaking. We must be shaking. Our shake we must be shaking. Our shake we must be shaking. We must be shaking.
implements of labor now and let your amen roar like fire and like thunder this is not the kind of amen to negotiate because each prayer is specially vomited by the Holy Ghost to make you arise and to shine and to incubate whatever your hands are doing with the fire and power and favor of God. Father, according to your commandment, we have brought forth here our implements of labor. Father, I decree right now that any power that is building a siege against the prosperity of any career, of any business, of any progress here, let those powers lose their hold in the name of Jesus. Let the power of prosperity, of progress, of blessings, of anointing, of divine acceleration, settle upon these implements in the name of Jesus. Whether it is convenient for the enemy or not, hear the word of the Lord. Allies and shine. Allies and shine. Allies and shine. Allies and, and shine. In the name of Jesus. Every 
voice of the wicked over your labor is cancelled now in the name of Jesus. Any hindrance, any bad luck, any bewitchment is flushed out by the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus flush them out. 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 Every curse of Goliath upon your labor. Let the curses backfire in the name of Jesus. And any power pre preparing strange fire against your labor. The strange fire shall go back to the sun. That's in the name of Jesus. And any power assigned to dethrone the king in you. I pull down that power in the name of Jesus. Now with a voice that roars like thunder. You will call on the blood of Jesus. Seven times. After calling blood of Jesus seven times. You say gather the good things that have been scattered in my life. Gather them now. You call blood of Jesus seven times. And I say, gather the good things that have been scattered in my life. And as, as you are saying it, the angels here will start a new level of operation. But let your blood of Jesus be the loudest here. Let's go! One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Gather the good things that have been scattered in my life. Gather them. Command them to be gathered. Jesus name we pray. Speak to that implement of labor now. You shout this aggressive prayer point at it. Spider of backwardness. Can you shout it loud? Jesus. Somebody is breaking through. You cannot afford to negotiate. We are not here to negotiate. Jesus. Jesus name we pray. Woman. Man over there. This word is for you. Sounds strange but it's for you. I decree that the powers that have poured blood on the ground in order to kill your business to kill your breakthrough. I command them to suck their blood and die in the name of Jesus. Powers 
that are offering sacrifices to push you backward. Let the sacrifices turn against them now in the name of Jesus. Turn against them. 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 In the name of Jesus. Silence. Something is about to happen. You that sister over there. Something is about to come out of you. This is the power that has been telling you. The evil personality that has been telling you that you will never marry. That evil personality at the count of seven it will go back to where it came from. And you will marry. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. The personality must depart. Thank you, Jesus. Now, with a loud voice, this is the final prayer on those implements of work. You will call on two things with your loud voice. Say, Holy Ghost! Blood of Jesus! Overshadow this instrument. Can I hear you shouting it loud? Your voice is not loud enough. Make it a lot louder than that. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. A louder amen. Have your seat, beloved. Before you go to bed tonight, you see some prayers at the back of this pamphlet. Make sure you pray it on your influence of labor before you sleep tonight. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This program still continues next power must change hands. Because the Lord, the Lord said we should do it three times. So bring those implements of labor again. The next power must change hands. I continue from where I left off last part of St. John's. The very key message. The battle against cryptic demons. The battle against cryptic demons. One of the tragedies of life is for somebody to be ignorant of his battles. You have no idea what you are going through. No wonder the Bible says my people not the devil's people my people they perish for lack of knowledge ignorance is a destroyer and it's a terrible thing last time we discussed this issue a little bit we read from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 19 
from where I'm going to read again this morning. First Samuel chapter 19 tells us a very deep story. Deep story. And explains so many things about the travails of men. It explains so many things that many people don't understand. And some questions people keep asking. In First Samuel chapter 19, I read from verse 23 to 24. Saul the king was prophesying. He was prophesying by the spirit of the living God, not by demonic spirits. But then as he prophesied, he tore off his own clothes and was naked. Naked rolling on the floor and still prophesying. Meaning that two spirits were at work. The spirit of God prophesying through him and the demonic spirit making him to tear off his clothes and roll about. Herein lies the deep problem. There are spirits that are cryptic. They stay in hiding. They hide. Why do they hide? They don't want you to deal with them. They don't want you to know they are there. So they hide. They hide. Waiting for the appropriate hour to strike. We call them cryptic demons. I'm praying for somebody here. Any demon that is waiting to attack you on your day of celebration and on your day of joy. I bury that power in the name of Jesus. Let your amen roar like thunder. In 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 23, and he went thither to Nehoeth in Ramah. Listen. The spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Nahod in Ramah. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner and laid down naked all that day. A king lay naked all that day. Wherefore they said he saw also among the prophets. So there is a class of spirit called cryptic demons. Secret masculating demons. They could hide from the cradle to the grave. And, and that last part of sentence I began to explain to you about the three temples in the Bible. The temple of Solomon, the temple of Herod, and the temple of our bodies. And we read from the book of Acts that day that says that the Almighty does not dwell in temple made with hands. That the life of man is a temple. Temple. And that day I explained that a man is a spirit living in a body and having a soul. The body consists of flesh, blood, and bones. The soul consists of mind, the will, and emotion. And the spirit consists of the knowledge, communication, and conscience. 
you want more information, get the tape. And that all these sections of man's life can be in bondage. So our bodies is the temple of the Almighty. It is actually the third temple. But listen very well. The devil has turned the temple of many people today to what we read in Revelation chapter 18 verse 2. The temple of many life today is exactly what we are going to read in Revelation 18.2. Revelation 18.2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is falling, is falling. And it's become the habitation of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. The temple of so many people's lives is just like that. And it's a pity. Bad spirits are dwelling in the temple of many believers. Remember, a man is three in one. It's a spirit dwelling in a body, having a soul. This is what we're trying to explain. That body that is flesh, bones, and blood can be in bondage of evil spirits while the spirit man is totally free. The mind can be under the total control of evil spirits. The soul can be under the control of evil spirits. While the body and the spirit they are free. The spirit if the spirit comes under the control of evil spirits that's what people call possession and oppression and obsession a situation where a spirit enters into a person suppresses the normal spirit and is another thing that is representing the person it's a terrible thing indeed this is the major spirit you find in psychiatric hospitals spirit that has entered a person suppressed the normal spirit and is exhibiting another character so that's what they call possession obsession oppression the person is in bondage internally for a person to be a wizard or a witch or somebody who goes out of the body to do wicked things that thing that thing is inside the spirit so those ones are possessed so those three departments can be engaged in bondage this is the typical example you find in Saul here Saul was not only a king but he was a prophet unfortunately Saul was an unstable character he was suffering from self will envy violent temper 
and all kinds of jealous. Eventually, the Spirit of the Lord departed from him. Evil spirit took over his life. That spirit of jealousy made him to be attacking David. And from time to time, that evil spirit took upper hand in his life. The spirit of God came upon the man in whom evil spirit has taken possession. So the, the, the tormented soul was caught between two conflicting forces. Good and evil. And he took off his clothes. When the spirit of God has upper hands, soul will prophesy. When that spirit does not have upper hand, soul begins to manifest all kinds of other things. This kind of situation you find the soul should not continue for a long time. If it continues for a long time, after some time, the spirit of God will leave. Matthew chapter 12 is very revealing in this matter. Matthew 12 chapter 40, Matthew chapter 12 verse 43. Matthew 12 43. Try to understand this very well, beloved. So some people ask questions. They don't understand. Why do certain things happen? Look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walked through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Listen to what the spirit says. Then he said, I will return into my house. My house is calling the life of man my house. From whence and came out. And when he's come, he found it empty, swept, and garnished. He's referring to it as my house. That's why it's important to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit to fill that house. The glory of God cannot fill your temple when you have dirtiness there. When Jesus appeared in that temple, he appeared with a whip to whip out the traders that are in the temple. The traders are the unclean spirits. This thing we're talking about is why you see somebody who claims to be holy and you sometimes do something so horrible. Why should somebody who always prophesying is also abusing people and cursing people? Why should somebody pray for the sick and the sickness comes back to him? Somebody will sing just now and the spirit of God will come down. The same person, when he or she loses the temper, the whole place will be boiling. Why should somebody who is a child of God be telling lies? Why should somebody pray? Prays very hot prayer, but immediately after the prayer, the fear still comes and grips the heart. That is a spirit that needs to go. It is strange, but it is true, beloved. A believer may have the Holy Spirit inside his spirit and have demons afflicting the body. That affliction is a trader in the temple. There are Christians who speak in tongues. But they have horrible experiences in the dream. They eat regularly with dead relatives. 
They are playing in water, they are playing with snakes, they are getting married with a dream. And they start backsliding. Start backsliding. This is a very serious matter. And this is why we need to pray really hard. There is a good anointing. There is a negative anointing. When the Spirit of God is at work, the good anointing comes up. When the other spirit is at work, the bad anointing comes up. There is anointing of anger. The body will be shaking. The person will be stammering. The person will become violent. The person will refuse to be pacified. Yet, this same person will preach and speak in tongues and get so easily provoked. I've seen somebody during a traffic jam and he's a pastor. Somebody drove roughly at his front. He came out and said, Bastard! He judged. Rubbish. And when he got back to the car, black, 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 Two spirits on a man. That is anointing of anger. It's a spirit entirely. Spirit entirely. This is a very, very serious matter. Many years ago, when I was a young scientist, I had to visit a very important person. I arrived at the office and sat down. I, they, they were, the staff they were discussing. They first of all looked at me. So, this man looks like an Igbo man. Yes, I don't think he's Yoruba. So they started speaking in Yoruba. So, let us wind up this man this morning. This is their boss. The boss that is inside the office. The one I came to see. The staff. Let's wind him up a little bit this morning. So one of them just opened the door. And says, sir, that file has disappeared. We cannot find the file again. Oh, he lost his temper. He was shouting. He was screaming. He was banging the table. He was shouting, shouting, shouting. And they were laughing. Then, after some time, he said, okay, let us now calm him down. And now came back and said, excuse me, sir, sorry, we found it. We found it. Then he calmed down. See what the anointing of anger is doing? Yes. Push him from place to place. Let me be honest with you, beloved. If you can see betraying violent anger, violent temper, are you get angry to the level nobody can calm you down, you need deliverance. The bottom line is that there is a demon in your body that needs to go out. The truth, the truth must be said. Anger in the school of deliverance and in the spirit realm is a door opener. Once that hunger starts, or you open the door to other demons to come inside. After the demons have entered, and you now calm down, they are already inside. You see, door opener. That's why. Couple should not be getting angry and be fighting themselves. Doors will open, all kinds of things will come in. And once they come in, getting them out is not as easy as you think. And it's so easy to control anger. Anytime you're angry, don't talk. 
Keep your mouth shut. Get away from the place. Do praise worship. Or speak in tongues. Once you don't give it expression, the anger will die still born. Die. But if any time the sweet of God says, We are here. And you begin to talk. They will grow more. They will write more. So the reason the anointing of anger uses some people, and then the spirit of God is using them too, is because there are two spirits on the man. But eventually, the anger in the body will push them into hellfire. That is an anointing of sexual perversion. At that moment, when it starts, even if the woman is saying, Leave me alone, I'm HIV positive. Leave me alone, I'm the brain of the man will not think again. At that moment, the person becomes senseless. The man will not even remember, this is our housemaid. Who remember those things anymore? Some will not even remember, this is my daughter. It's an anointing, the spirit. This is the reason we need to deal with these cryptic spirits. Because for such people, once that anointing comes upon them, until they have committed the sin, they will not stop. And once they are finished, the spirit will say, okay, fine, let's go and sleep a little bit now. There is anointing of evil speech. Bad language. Such people, you hardly can control what they are saying. They can talk to a person, the person will decide to commit suicide. Anointing of evil speech. And after they have spoken and spoken, and there is plenty of trouble, I say, I am sorry. I am sorry. When the spirit, when the spirit of God has upper hand, I am sorry. When that spirit is in place, they keep talking. There is an anointing of depression. One time the person is happy and rejoicing in the Lord. The other time is sad. When the cup of soul. These are activities and powers of cryptic demons. We're going to stop here and continue next time.